Hi, my name is Anna Hardwick, and I'm with First Weekend Club, and I'm at the Toronto Screenwriting Conference this weekend with Emmy winner Leonard Dick of The Good Wife, House, and Lost. Okay, one of the most inspiring things today in the session, you were talking about how a writer keeps their vision intact when working in a larger uh, circumstance and with larger networks. How do you? How any advice for young writers who are starting out? I would offer uh, the advice that a wise executive I worked with once uh, said to me, which is, what they ultimately want is someone to take them by the hand and lead them. And if you stick to your vision and uh, honor your own vision, the proverbial they, uh, the network, the studio, they will listen. Uh, they're certainly your partners. You should listen to their notes, but you don't have to follow everything they, they say. It's your vision. Uh, treat them as partners. There's a way to manage the process. But if you stick to your vision, you will feel whether the, the project works or not, at least you will feel that you have done your job uh, appro adequately. Okay, so some diplomacy and some uh, clarity, some real clarity. Okay, uh, you're breaking all the rules in your shows, and uh, you talked about having um, the teaser being 18 pages. You know, like you go to screenwriting school and they tell you, no, you need your teaser, these amount of pages. The reason why your shows work, I think, is because you are breaking the rules. Where do you where do you get the courage and the vision to do that? It comes from a, b several factors, but first of all, it's a tribute to Robert Michelle King who, who created our show, but we work very hard to tell our stories in a different way. Uh, we're nominally a legal show. Uh, we try to differentiate ourselves from Law & Order because Law & Order tells their stories in a certain way, and they do it splendidly. And so uh, it w we, it, we don't want to try to replicate what they do because we, we won't do it as well. But what we'll do is we'll mix things up. We'll start a story in the middle. We'll do it at a different venue. We want to keep the audience guessing. It also is a, it's challenging and, and fun for us. And it's, it's something as simple as we don't necessarily show the verdict. If, you know, if Kalinda finds that incriminating piece of evidence or if Alicia finds a way to shake down Michael J. Fox is across the table, once you get to that moment, the audience knows. Mm -hmm. It's story over, so it's anticlimactic to go and hear the verdict in court. I'd rather see what's going on with the characters mm -hmm. in their relationship or some of the office politics afterwards. Okay, so uh, you, you respect your viewers, and that's what I get while watching your shows. I feel I feel like you respect our intelligence, and you respect our ability to, to make deductions. And, and um, okay, you are a Canadian in Hollywood. Do you bring something s uh, different or interesting to the table, um, besides a sense of politeness, perhaps? <laughs> Uh, it's interesting. I, I think uh, everybody in Hollywood likes to collect Canadians. We're like these little <laughs> Russian dolls. We're objects of curiosity because we're all s we're all seen as being so nice so and, and nice. so polite. So in nice. fact, uh, my wife says, "Stop apologizing." I, I, I tend to apologize for things that I, I, I never do. Uh, but it, what I what I found is all the Canadians I've worked with have actually been really nice a and in a in a very uh, intense business where there are tight deadlines and the stakes are huge and you have sometimes difficult personalities, Canadians are a really nice breath of fresh air. And uh, that's why people you know, seem to like to, wor to work with us. I haven't met a bad Canadian yet down there. <laughs> we're sure like there the diffusers. Some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. We're, yeah, we're the, we're the good influences in <laughs> on shows and in movies. <laughs> okay, good to know this. Um, you have a bird's eye view of Canada and our industry. What is your hope? What is your wish for us and for our films and television and, yeah, our storytelling? Uh, for me, the, the, the biggest hope is that the Canadian networks take more chances to do more original programming. And I, I say that just not to play to the home crowd, but there is some incredible talent up here. Mm -hmm. The shows that are being produced uh, are really high quality. And yes, there are issues with budgets and, and uh, population size, but uh, there's no reason you can't, uh, Canadians can't create more hit shows that sell in the States, that sell, sell overseas. And I would just love to see the, the networks do more original programming. I, I've met so many talented writers. I have a friend uh, who's from Toronto who uh, lives in LA who's actually come back to produce a sitcom. He's having a ball. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's been a great experience for him. So uh, I just want to see more original Canadian programming. Uh, and you have a great idea for us, the, the centaur cop, perhaps the polite? Yes. Uh, we have this running joke in our writer's room that the, about how do you sell a show in the U.S. And it's you just if you want to do a show about ancient Greece and your lead character is a centaur, you just can't sell a show about a centaur. It has, he has to be a, a centaur who solves crimes. And so we've come up with Centaur Cop. And, of course, as you know, in the pilot episode, Centaur Cop, breaks the rules and the uh, cap crusty captain uh, says, uh, turn in your badge and your pan flute. <laughs> and so the Canadian version of that would be polite centaur cop. This would be yeah. a, a cop who saw a centaur who solves crimes in ancient Lethbridge, Alberta. Mm -hmm.
course. Wonderful. Uh, maybe with some, uh, are there dinosaurs? Anyway, <laughs> um, let's, let's, <laughs> let's move on. But thank you so much. It's really wonderful to talk to you. Thank and you so much. Great. It's a pleasure. It's a lot of fun.